Well, a professor at Boise State University in Idaho has thousands of people calling for his firing because he has violated the sacred liberal catechism on transgenderism. In a recent article for the Heritage Foundation and again for the Daily Signal, Professor Scott Yenner argued that transgender ideology is undermining the traditional family by affirming the right of children to change their gender, even if their parents object. A petition says Yenner ought to lose his job for saying this. So far, Boise State says his job is safe, though a dean has also issued a statement saying this rhetoric does not reflect the values of diversity, whatever that means. Professor Yenner joins us tonight. Professor, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Tuck, for having me. So can you just explain crisply what you said that was considered so controversial by Boise State? Well, it's one of those things that's almost difficult to know uh, what precisely got everyone angry, yes. uh, because most people concede the point that transgender rights can undermine parental rights. And uh, so the general trope has been that I've uh, said misogynist and transphobe and homophobic things in the article. But you were just noting that if you allow a child agency freedom to decide his or her gender, assuming you believe that's even physically possible, but if you let kids decide, then that undermines the right of parents to make decisions for the kid. So that's like a statement of fact, isn't it? It seems to be a statement of fact. I mean, it's difficult to imagine what the family could look like if there weren't parental rights and parental authority uh, that parents would have to uh, raise their children the way they see fit. So what kind of response did you get for saying something obvious? Well, I'm not sure that anyone ever read my article, and I've been proud of my administration for always defending my right to, to write on what I would like and my academic freedom. But right. at the same time, they've, uh, they've said that I've engaged in hate speech and uh, that I've created an unsafe environment and I've been uncivil. And I think that we're beginning to see at Boise State the conflict between a university that's committed to social justice and a university that's committed to rational inquiry. And that, to me, is the slow death of the modern university. Yeah, or the quick death. It seems to be happening pretty rapidly. Um, so in what way do they claim you're uncivil? Well, I, uh, I think the incivility that they see is that I don't affirm everyone's identity when I conduct my research on what the effects of identity politics are on the family. So I think that's the new definition of civility. It's, the, it's you have to affirm people in their identity in order to be civil. Whereas the old understanding of civility, which I think fits with a university that's dedicated to rational inquiry, is you can agree to disagree politely with someone. Right, right. You can, you can say, I, I have a different view, but I don't hate you for it. That, that, I mean, that was the op my operating understanding. So they have, in effect, denounced you in a very modern way by saying that what you said does not reflect their values of diversity. Now, I hear that phrase a lot. I have no actual idea what it means. Do you know what it means? Well, I think I would go back to that understanding of civility, Tucker, that uh, I think what diversity means is that the need to affirm everyone in their own identity as they understand it. And, uh, and the failure to do that makes you inciv uncivil or maybe a, a, a person who perpetrates hate speech. So I thought diversity was the idea you could have people with different backgrounds, different experiences, different views, and they could all kind of live together. It sounds like they're demanding uniformity rather than diversity. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the great ironies, Tucker, that, uh, that Boise State, for instance, has recently hired a diversity inclusion officer, and he is uh, one of the primary people behind denouncing me in public. You know, he's blamed my articles for Charlottesville and genocide and called me a neo-Nazi. And, um, and, but what the effect of that is, is to make people without tenure and without the protections that come with an academic job less likely to speak, less likely to engage in ideas, and that's the diversity officer at the university. So the diversity officer is demanding conformity, and no one sees that as Orwellian or totalitarian. Looking from the outside in at the university, not just yours, but so many of them, it seems like a grotesque joke to a lot of people like me who are parents of college-aged children. Like, at what point do you think the rest of the country says, I'm, you know, I'm not sending my kids to a place like that anymore? Yeah, I mean, I would like, you know, truth and labeling on campuses. You know, if a campus isn't going to be dedicated to rational inquiry, 
they should just announce that they're dedicated to social justice and eradicating right. uh, prejudices that they understand them and allow people to choose which universities they're going to. It's not clear to me that there's enough intellectual diversity on any of these campuses to conduct a genuine constructive dialogue if those campuses are committed to social justice instead right. of rational inquiry. And it's the diversity officer's job to stamp out intellectual diversity. This, this moment's going to get out in history as one of the craziest things that's ever happened in this country. And I appreciate your having the bravery to stand up right in the middle of it. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Tucker.